thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, just as a short. Is a complete Ethernet network connecting, um, and as most of you know, in the context of crypto analysis, the BKIC is connecting each in a set of starting states S with each states in a set of ending states C or some sub cipher. So it can be a graph which applies to a certain number of, of sets, or um, otherwise, set which connects a certain number of starting and ending states. You know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, over sub cipher, which was introduced by the standard paper by Karl Torvich, Reschberger, and Zavellewa as a formalization of so called initial structures in splicing cut attacks, which were introduced by Haruki and Suzaki. So, in the context of cryptanalysis, the vertices of the graph are just starting and ending states, and the edges of such a graph are encryption paths which where each path uses a different key. Since the first, while the first attacks were, um, yeah, zero-frame pre-image and pseudo images attacks on round reduced SHA-2, scale and their compression function, they were soon later adapted for key recovery attacks on the full IAS by Bogdanov, Kofantovich, and Rechberger. And not much time later, many more key recovery results followed by for instance, on Square by Mala, on Area 256 by Shen Shu, and also by many other who contributed to this ongoing research. While the first introductions were covering independent <coughs> clicks in a series of papers, Kopotovich, Laurent, Reschberger, and Bogdanov introduced several further approaches to, to this, for instance, probabilistic clicks or clicks for permutations. In late 2011 and early 2012, the AS paper of Kopatovich was very interesting to us since we wanted to consider novel recent, recent cryptanalysis techniques. And our, re our initial aim was to completely understand the text by Bogdanov. And in the development, then we decided just to implement a small framework, which would let us and the general head of cryptanalysis to find independent e-clicks of Mexico. We focus on independent e-clicks because they're very interesting this a, a generic method, but more importantly, they're very formalized and they give us, from the independency of the branches, we must apply a very well-defined criterion which, is, which can be automated to be tested. So, in the remaining 15 to 20 minutes of my talk, after giving this short motivation, I will just, in brief, give you the necessary details again for easy quick analysis, have a look on our frameworks, show you the results, and compare them to others. <coughs> just in brief, because we're all our experts, and what is weekly um, quick analysis in short? So, of course, since it was introduced as a replacement for initial structures, Given a primitive, aside from a compression function, we could just use a splitting of this primitive like in a usual splicing cut setting. So we are in the middle, in the middle attack session settings, so one can define in the splicing cut setting an arbitrary start and an arbitrary matching point in the primitive. For instance, we can say um, we define splitting over uh, a primitive E into E1, E2, and Mafka E. So, like initial structures, the click is constructed just for a certain number of steps around the starting states, which we just say here is not going to be. In the following, then, Heschberger and Al introduced several construction algorithms. For instance, one can use a, start, a starting state S0, define a first so called base key, K0 here, and compute in forward direction to derive an ending state C0. <coughs> then, Adversary has to find two to the D good forward or delta differentials and computes um, for any so derived new key two to the D times in forward directions. And if it's a good cipher, one will expect to arrive at different cipher things. 
Similarly, then, G4 has to find 2 d good backward differentials. It has to compute 2 d times in backward direction. Now, since, since these are other differences, key differences, one should um, yeah, expect to land or to arrive at different starting states as J. And the crucial or the interesting um, observation by Reschberg at that was just if the traits are independent, this means if they do not share any active nonlinear operations, then they could fix every of these encryption paths through one of the starting states and through one of the ending states. And with their B clicks, they could so test a set of 2 to the 2D keys with only 2 times 2 to the D computations, which results in a significant computational advantage for the sub cipher covered here. And in the case when now one has them meet in the middle attack or splicing cut attack, of course, in this, set, in this setting, then the adversary can use the gain, adv gain advantage from the splicing cut or the meet in the middle attack. Um, for, for its attack. As an alternative, if the number of covered rounds of the parts not covered by the B click, they proposed a technique called, which they called machine with recomputations, which allows the adversary still to cover any number of further rounds while yeah, not having to depend on an existing attack. In this technique, of course, the adversary derives first the plain text or cipher text, um, which are the end which is closer to, um, or which requires less computations in the setting, and takes uh, one direction only oracle, which suffices here. For instance, in the setting, it suffices to use a decryption only oracle to obtain the corresponding plain text for the cipher text. And in the following first, she computes in forward direction from every plain text in the setting to some chosen matching state and additionally does computations from the intermediate states as j to the positive of the matching state and stores these values. So in a volume then the adversary for all remaining two to the two d minus these two times two to the d computations, the adversary has <coughs> only to recompute those parts of the remaining rounds where the states differ in computations. So, from that aspect, the computation advantage can be reduced significantly, also in cases where no mean minimal attack is Additionally, this um, advantage can be further reduced by using partial matching instance. So, um, in a seminal paper, there was a great discussion whether or not um, attacks using exhaustive parts are now graves or not. I do not want to contribute to this discussion. Hashberger, Gia, and Wang consider themselves that brute force language analysis is not able to conclude whether or not a particular investigated scientific is a weakness or not. Because, in fact, it is a generic technique that can be applied to any primitive and any number of rounds used. And there are also, by Daniel Bernstein, famous Eiffel Room entries saying that uh, the low computational advantage is not so relevant for key lengths such as 128 bits or much. Nevertheless, um, to say more generally, B-click attacks can really indeed help to derive a new lower computational bound for individual ciphers. And that's, um, yeah, it's, it's not more, but it's not less more. And for us, since we want to consider independent inklings, our major motivation was really on the most important step. So, how far can we construct a B clicker? And so, how many rounds can we can cover for an investigated cipher? And yeah, to have the crypt analysis then with the remaining generic tenses. So, our framework just performs uh, basically these three tasks, three tasks, which uh, the most important, of course, is to have a look on the B click search. Then, yeah, for the remaining rounds to identify matching, which minimizes the number of parts which have to be recomputed within those rounds, and to give a visualization 
ähm, tut, äh, denn alles ist gut. Ja. Äh, Task of Weeklix, Search for Independent Weeklix is can be really reduced to finding a pair of uh, a set of differentials that are I and number J, which share no active components in nonlinear operations. So for instance here the AES is depicted with uh, yeah, the forward um, where the forward different or net data differentials are depicted on the left side and the number differentials are depicted in the middle. And since the AES has a non nonlinear operation, the S box or the sub layer is there, the one can see that these just an as an example, are independent from each other. So, why would the test for a given cipher and a given dimension of the desired matrix? Every possible, um, yeah, every possible key difference in forward and backward direction, this task scales quite badly. For instance, for a key size of 128 bits and a big dimension of E to A, one could test for one direction. 2 to the 37 around, or 10 to the 12 um, differences. Why one had to test, since one had to test uh, so many forward and the same number of backward differences, also in that simple setting one already had to test um, about 2 to 17 differential, <coughs> differential pairs if they are independent on that. Nevertheless, of course, for nibblewise or bytewise operating primitives, one can reduce time and memory complexity drastically by considering them. And for instance, in this setting, um, a nibblewise primitive, uh, for instance, like the LED64, one had to test only 432 or 2 or 496 differences in one direction. And for bytewise primitives such as the AS128, this task reduces to 1601, which is increasing very, very bad. So, to lose one word of how one should try to insert key differences, of course. Uh, it's desirable since we want to obtain the longest peak as possible to affect as little parts of the state as we can. And therefore, it is desirable to inject some key differences with the least possible hemming rate at the beginning of the delta and the end of the number differences. Moreover, for cycle rides where we have a key length which extends the subkey size, it is in many cases possible to pass one round for free and on, on even more and then to inject as little, as little parts um, which are active in the state as late as possible. So just to be consistent, we have chosen the way of considering case subkey sub bits for cycle key sizes which extend the subkey. For instance, this applies in the AES or certain AES like ciphers or like <coughs> They are, of course, different variants. The um, very basic um, possibility, which I sketched here, is just to check the minimum number of bits which are defined by the dimension. Of course, this is a desirable aspect. Uh, yet, in some cases, this may not lead uh, to the optimal number of routes which could be covered by the For instance, one could think of ejecting the equal differences in more several, several bit bytes or nibbles, depending on the cipher, in the hope of cancelling out results of the round transformation. Moreover, of course, we need to provide the option to use more sophisticated custom differences, such as the result of the mix column or inverse mix column, or yeah, different results of the round transformation which may be cancelled in order to obtain then log since testing all those options of the third is infeasible, we leave actually the specification of such custom differences to the user as it So far to BTX search, um, for the matching on the remaining rounds, um, we offer as option that our framework allows to test uh, all our rounds of the remaining of the remaining parts where to split in order to minimize the number of recomputed we can do the path of the cipher and to test all possible paths of the states which could be used at least as a partial matching. Generally spoken, which properties do we have in our framework? We uh, 
um, we possess that we compute and store forward differentials first, then compute the, the numbers di differentials, and test each pair for independence. While this is for um, for the first of two options, this is quite a very feasible task for most ciphers. In the case of sophisticated differences, if the slot uh, data differentials do not fit in the memory, you can just perform the D-click search and iterations. The scales uh, this takes a little more time, but scales still really back really good. Um, as aspects, as you have noted, it would be desirable to have round voice encryption and decryption. And since we really want to inject sub-key differences with low having rate, we need an invertible key schedule <coughs> if we want to do this. Just to know if or that our key splitting is well defined. For instance, as you may remember, for the AES and AES like ciphers, um, one can reconstruct the, <coughs> the secret key from a number of key subsequent bits of any of, in any position of the array of the yeah, of the subkeys. This applies only to many lightweight ciphers, for instance, present like ciphers, which have a key register of uh, yeah, where the secret key is stored in the beginning and which can be, which is updated then in an inverted function. <coughs> so while this applies for many ciphers, and basically for those which were of interest for us, um, there are ciphers such as IREA, for instance, where, um, which do not have an inverted key split. So for those, we say, okay, then we have to inject or starting key difference in the secret key as a proper solution. Nevertheless, we need uh, yeah, a consistent interface which is provided by framework and cycle implementations which stick to this interface. We go to the usage, we provide replications as the input points to be click search and matching. So we give click search um, requests from the user to specify his target cipher, uh, strategy, how she, how she wants to build a starting key difference, as well as a cipher dependent strategy, how to look, where to locate nonlinear operations in order really to test the differentials correctly for dependency, a desired dimension, and just a maximum number of tested rounds of R she would like to uh, be tested. Uh, if the B click for a certain number of uh, rounds is, is found or multiple and serialized, and the matching then just expects the desired target type and serialized B click to determine then the optimal matching and derive the computational complexity and output this to the user. And for visualizations, and this is a really good task to have it. Um, we decided to output BTIC and the matching sequence in BTIC format just to have a really short <coughs> visualization. For our results, we were happy to use the results by Bogdanov et al. on the AES, which we could use not to adapt for implementation, but just very kind that it's working for me. And we were very glad to obtain, um, considering the number of rounds covered by the BTIC, the equal results as then. In the following, we then considered further AES like ciphers such as BKSQ, or which is a 96 bit version of the, of the AES, or CASAT, and had a further look on AES like lightweight ciphers such as LED, Client, and the core prints, and also considered present. Of course, one has to compare these results to previous um, or yeah, to all contributions which were named at the beginning of this talk. Um, of course, for instance, the AES results by Dr. Hanf et al., but also to those by Malash and had many other researchers. The expert might have seen it, and if there is, would have been enough space to place two tables next to each other, we can see that the computational complexity of their results is a little bit better than ours. This is in fact, this is of course due to the fact that we use an automated um, approach and this is quite, yeah, this is okay to us since we say we really want to consider how far do we want to come considering the meeting. So our, free, so our framework is very good of giving a first impression how far and at first we can apply a BTIC in an uh, attack on a certain primitive. And it's always best then to 
deeper investigates the considered primitive, find maybe more sophisticated primitives, and then on frameworks would to have a quick <coughs> verification of these results if the computational complexity can then efficiently be reduced. So far to this talk. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And for your Well, are there any questions? Okay. I wanted to ask you, so here it looks as if you have considered mostly uh, the application of bikes as uh, when they are used for performing an accelerated exhaustive search. And my question is, do you think that uh, optimizing bikes for this is the same as optimizing them or when they are used just as an improvement of classical medium linear attacks or you don't want to search for the key or say, say it in another way do you think that your tool can, can use uh, uh, for finding the optimized by clicks for medium linear attacks that reduce the number of uh, qubits search? <coughs> Actually, of course for all ciphers which have a certain diffusion in the key schedule it's um, should look at optimizing the length of a certain part of the medium letters because then a big click um, can restrict the differences used in the forward and backward part of an attack too much and can lower uh, the length of these parts significantly. For instance, for the AS, which has a, a slow diffusion but has a certain diffusion, um, from that, what I know of the AS, one should just first to find a long feed in the middle attack and then derive a BK from the use difference At the moment, we really wanted to consider situations where there is no meet in the middle attack um, on the number of remaining rounds. So we wanted really just um, so if there is one then the situation is much better. But we just wanted to contribute to finding new lower bounds on a certain number of Okay, so uh, in the, the other case, instead of trying to find the longest bike clicks, maybe you want to find uh, the one that adapts the best to the long key bits that would. Mm -hmm. okay. For the AS, I have certain, I've realized certain settings that it's really better to uh, yeah, optimize the. Okay, thank you. No more questions? So uh, let's uh, thank the speaker again.